welcome along and welcome back to Purbeck Valley. We've got a fairly busy day today. We need to get the canola weeded. We also need to get some fertilizer on it as well. Uh, we also need to get the final cut of grass done for the year. And I think we're going to do silage from it. I did mention last time, I think, that we, we might do hay. But... It's late in the year. I don't think it's massively realistic to be doing hay at this point. So, uh, yeah, we're going to get it all collected up and uh, and then wrapped up into silage. Uh, we're starting off, though, down the shop here because we have our front weight and our uh, existing fertilizer spreader here. And we're going to get rid of both of these because both of these are leased. So fertilizer spreader, we want to return that. Yep. And the brand new front weight we picked up last time, we want to return that as well. And the reason why we're returning the front weight is because as soon as I moved to the next day, a front weight turned up in the shop for us to purchase. So I think we might get this, uh, just get this bought. This is, I'm going to get it in the jet black. I think that fits our tractor better. And 578, yes. Thank you very much. Now, there's a couple of other things in here that I think are really cool. The Bailey trailer, I would really quite like to pick that up. It's a bit big for our farm, though, and our dump trailer does seem to do fairly well. Uh, the other thing, though, is this, this SE bag lifter arm. We do currently have a bag lifter, dual bag lifter leased, um, but I think I might return that. So, yep, yeah, we'll return that. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get this SC one that is available. Uh, I'm going to get it with a... I want to get it with the Steyr color, which I think is... We'll go with the case red for that. And, uh, yeah, that will then fit with our, with our tractor that we've got. And we want a front loader on it. So we'll buy that for 584 and yeah that will do us for now i think quite well so we just need to pick up the weight on the front of this tractor we'll pop down here later and pick up the uh, bag lifter uh, we only yeah a single bag lifter arm will will do fine for us and uh, that is a really great start oh but we're not done because we need a weeder. We've got to get a hoe to sort out our canola favorite pack as far as uh, weeders go. So uh, we've got the maize, the sunflower, the sugar beet. So we want the standard one. That is a hoe. It is a little bit more expensive, but it's the right one for the crop we're doing. Rim color. I will go with the red. And uh, we want to lease this. So this is going to cost us more than both of the things we just bought. I would really like a hoe to come up in the in the shop for sale that we could buy. Because we're leasing one of these every year. Although we need two of them because this is the standard one. And then we got, we're running sunflowers as well. So I like to get the sunflower specific one when we're doing the weeds on that. But we, uh, yeah, we need one or both of those to come up that would be very useful let's back this up there's no difference between the two they're both hoes that, that run in the game but realistically uh you'd probably go with the different setup although it'd be quite nice if i don't know if these would be configurable in real life to to basically have one or the other so what i'll do is go back to the farm i'm, I'm gonna see today if we can get no, I think what I was I was going to say there, I think we'll see today if we can get course play doing the grass. But I think the grass work will be just so much more fiddly. So I'm going to get the hoe running uh, on this and uh, with course play. So let's bring this into the corner of the field here. Clear off whatever course we've got on there and set a new one. Two headlands, one tool. Uh, we will start work on the headland first and up and down, right? And generate me a course. And this is the course it's come up with, finishing in that top corner there, which is nice and close to an exit. So let's get that started. So we're next to the first waypoint. 
Uh, let's unfold the tool because quite often what will happen is that it just won't start properly if you don't unfold the tool. There we go. And start that off. And away this goes. And it should handle the weeds with little issue. And that means we are jumping into this. I think we will give this a little bit of a refill with fuel. At the moment, we're down to... Yeah, we're, we're a bit low on fuel in the class. I don't often show me refueling. Maybe because I basically forget to do it most of the time. Now let's turn the engine off. And we will refill. Uh, we have... Uh, that done and refuel there we go so petrol uh fuel tank we've got uh 500 odd liters left oh i think we probably need to buy some more fuel looking at this our fuel tank is a bit low so i might get some fuel purchase this morning yeah uh we've got less fuel in the tank now than we have diesel in the tractor so uh Oh, we're going to have to drop the weight off as well. So we'll drop the weight off over here. Get that out of the way. And switch over. Drop it down. And drop that off there. Because we've got to put the front mower on. And we've got to put the baler on as well. So shift ourselves around here. And of course, the other thing about uh, doing uh, silage bales instead of doing hay bales is we will be able to very quickly get the fields done going around them and then after that all we got to do is pick them up and we can at our ledger then get them wrapped whereas doing doing the other way around getting uh, getting hay bales done we've got to do two passes in a day and uh, i'd like to just get the fields cut and, and done at the end of the year and then we're, we're all good. We could then actually just get them wrapped a little bit later. We're going to be doing a big sell-off next time, I think, in January. And hopefully we will uh, have everything wrapped by then. But if we don't, then what we'll be able to do is go and, uh, and get the wrapping done in January. But I, I expect to maybe get that done off camera a bit between then and now uh with allowing us to just sort of get this done quickly right let's unfold everything all is lowered oh the front is lowered oh, this this mower is a little bit odd it says it's lowered when it's not yeah there we go right and unfold everything yeah, it's a, it's a weird mower, this. I, I lose track of it all the time as to what its actual position is. Right, and that's the gates closed because the gates always get in my way. We'll start everything up. Lower everything down. And we're going to cut right up to the edge of the road this time. And uh, hopefully, oh, be okay. I think... We're going to have to get back to the farm, though. Or we're going to have to pop back to the farm because the... Uh, is that auto unloading, which is how I prefer it to be doing? Yeah, automatic drop is on. Uh, we're going to need some more net wrap soon, uh, which is uh, what we're running low on at the moment. Uh, we've only got 264 meters left. Uh, and I will say, actually, on the subject of NetWrap, I love that, that NetWrap and consumables like that are a standard feature of FS25. That we now have consumables like that is absolutely brilliant. And I'm hoping that it's not just the NetWrap and the, uh, the silage bell wrap and things like that. Uh, I'm hoping we're going to have other consumables in the game as well. Uh, but we'll see as it goes. But yeah, more realism. Having to, to actually fill your machines with stuff before they can work. I am so for that. That is such a great change. Coming around to my third headland. And we released a 
He released a bale at the top of the field there. I don't know where that's gone. I think that's rolled off somewhere. That's not good, especially if it's gone through the hedgerow over there. Yeah. How are we going to get this out of here? I don't think there's an entranceway. We'll have to go and grab the uh, the front loader, I think, and work out how to get into around here. Ah, there's an entrance at the top. So, yeah, we'll go grab the front loader and... Uh, or when we actually get the trailer on and get picking things up, we'll be able to go down there. But we are uh, at the point now where we're on the third headland. I'm hoping it's going to be enough space to turn around. We will go round the field once more. It looks like where we started, though, and uh, and got ourselves set up on this field this time, uh, it's actually given us a really good opportunity. We've got no bales unloaded at the end of the field. And so, as a result, uh, we are uh, pretty clear as far as getting the rest of this field done. Now, that is some very good news. It's going to make things a lot easier for us. Oh, three is not quite enough. I think we're going to have to do a fourth headland here in order to, to make this work. Uh, but it is working quite nicely at the moment. See, that bale is, uh, is rolling down the bottom. I don't think we're getting a true indication of exactly where the uh the bales are being dropped off at the moment especially on this side here where we've got the slope it's going down uh but i think this is the best way i've ever done this field so far uh it seems to to be fairly neat uh it's going to be easier to go up and down at the end uh, i've got the the pickup at the ends isn't too bad it's straightening up and I'm going to give myself enough space to turn around. All of which is uh, very, very useful on here. And yeah, look at that. We uh, we have a very neat, very easy field that we've worked here. And, uh, and those are all going to be nice, easy bales to get picked up. The only thing that we have got at the moment is uh, we've got some grass in the corners that need picking up which is normal working at this field uh, but it is curved in such a way that as soon as we uh, drop the mower or, or we're no longer worried about where the mower is going uh, we'll be able to get things running i'm going to reverse this and make sure this bale isn't in my way uh but all in all yeah this is uh the neatest I think I've done and I think I've finally managed to work out how to get this setup working on this field I've set myself up a GPS course now so that I'm uh, more easily able to just come around and grab a row why did it not pick up any of that row oh the mower got everything got turned off because we've run out of rack so uh, that's going to be a fun thing to clean up. Let's go grab the pallet of wrap. And uh, we can get this refilled. And then clean up the mess that we've got over here. We've got this set of pallet forks actually. From the SE pack. Uh, that I'm not a huge fan of. They don't seem to work very well. And I'm just wondering. Maybe we want to go and switch these out quickly. There are another set of. Uh, forks that are available that are uh, well that are in the shop now that might work better but these ones just yeah these have never worked as uh, as i would have liked at all we pop in here yeah there's the uh net wrap but you'll see what uh, i mean with these in a moment so we'll get them in these are extra wide ones as well that we've got here they just don't seem to sit as well on the pallet. Uh, and I think it's it's going to cause us problems and they're too wide and yeah. And, and with the opportunity of some others, uh, I think we might pop to the shop and see if we can switch them out uh, while we have the opportunity. Now, I do have to go with a pallet on the road because unfortunately... 
my farm does not have a track around to this field let's bring this round here then and oh my gate to shut and you see that's my issue they do not sit securely on this little pallets do not sit securely on these uh on these runs and now that now it's massively off to the side here i don't like these i think we'll go switch them unfortunately the ones we got available are from the same pack so this may or may not work all right that's put a whole load in i'm just gonna leave this here for a minute let's go switch these out and see if the ones that are currently available used are any better because yeah i don't like these ones so the ones we have at the moment mechanical pallet forks uh those will sell for how much at the moment tell me oh 600 oh actually we'll save money so uh yeah let's repaint them then and repair them yes and then they will sell for nearly a thousand so yes okay and then in the sales at the moment we've got standard pallet forks uh we'll put them on the front loader and uh oh wow you can change the fork length uh which i like a lot but we'll go with the the standard ones again we're gonna go with the case red on here uh main color is fine and we will buy those yes okay right hopefully these will work a little bit better we're going for the gates red because they match my style a little bit better and we've got both the pallet forks down here and the uh the bag lifter i don't suppose i can get the bag lifter on these as well there's no way of connecting up no we've got no no hydraulic lines along the front of this still move them though right let's see if we can thread this through here and uh, and take both back at once those already seem to be a much better fit for this are these solid in the middle there or will this go through they're solid in the middle there right i'll have to go and pick them up separately uh let's go and chest these on the pallet though and see if it works okay and pallet in and under well, that seems to be working pretty well so far yeah those are sitting much better i like this set a lot more okay so everything refilled let's uh turn it get ourselves back into a row right i'm gonna reverse myself out a bit although yeah it's reversing with the gps on is gonna lead to the uh baler being in the wrong position and that is now picking that up really nicely we're gonna have fun though getting that other row done i don't quite know how i'm gonna get in there because we managed to avoid having a bale in a bad position for all of the headlands and then the first row i cut in with we get a bale in a position that causes us issue it's uh it's a little bit odd and a little bit annoying and the rain has started to fall this might give us a problem how long is it due to last night ah, a few hours if we're lucky we might be able to get the other tractor going around the other field it has finished work on its current field uh doing the grass work here is not going to affect it we we'll, should be all right with this but the rain on uh the land that we want to do the uh, do the weeding on that might make our tractor start to sink into it and i need to be careful that we don't harm any crops while we're trying to get uh, the weeds out of them and that means moving this tractor on as quickly as possible how's the sinking going not too bad at the moment so let's clear this course off we'll take this and we'll head down to the other field 
and uh, and hopefully it's not going to have too much of an issue three hours of rain is not going to be great though it maybe it'll, maybe it'll clear up in two maybe it'll uh it, it won't be too bad look at the weeds on this field though that is pretty awful set up the course uh right so same again generate me a field work course i'm happy with that yeah that's what it looks like starting at the bottom here finishing up the top and so we need to unfold that watching in the mirrors for when it's gone down and away it goes and once it's done and got into the field i then want to close these gates because these gates will just get in the way and off it goes a little bit of cleaning up left to do on here we still need to get that road that uh, i messed up with and need to get the stuff that's laying in the corners We've got 86 percent of a bale at the moment so last little bit this corner here uh, behind me so that corner there there's a whole load of grass in it uh, but uh, there's not much i can do to get it picked up what i am going to do at this point then is we're going to lower the front down gonna disconnect and take it off back out and that'll give me a little bit more maneuverability to do the cleanup on this field then we can just reattach that once we uh, we've done the cleanup. So start that down and yeah, nicely slipping into this row here. We'll get the remains of this, and then we should be able to maneuver around the corners well enough to pick up the rest of the grass on this field. Yeah, this is a lot easier. We're just sort of shuffling around very nicely there we go and we've got the same in this corner over here looks like we missed a bit actually further up the field too the grass on this map is very similar color to uh, the actual cut area so it's not the easiest thing to see and we sh yeah this is why we took the mower off because i'm much more easily able get into these corners without having to worry about the huge great mower on the front of the tractor one more little bit it is so well camouflaged but no in fact it's not a little bit of uh, of grass there was there was a tiny bit of grass there um, but I, yeah, I think it was actually a shadow what I was seeing and up to the top corner here clear this off Oh this rain. Yeah, this rain has properly set in now I can only imagine the fun the weeder is having at the moment Really really needs to be careful Let's just go and have a quick look. Yeah, I think We want to stop this for now that is sinking way too far into this field for that to be good for this crop last little bit then and that is all done let's go and hook back up our mower and uh yeah the grass field thankfully is tough enough for us to be able to do this in the rain but uh, i'm not happy that our weeder basically has been stopped because of it into the second field i get to the lights on on this track it's, it is so dark with this rain it's uh, slightly ridiculous and we'll turn everything on we'll drop the front down and with as easy as that was to maneuver on the previous field i'm gonna worry a lot less about uh, how tight we are in the corners should be able to just go round and then we'll clean up later and i'm hoping we have as much success with where the bales get placed on this field as we had with it on the last one moisture level is very much something i'd love to see in farm sim and if you think about it the moisture level is something that that 
you need to control even in silage and so doing this job like this having a moisture level in the game would really make a difference to uh, being able to see the quality of your silage and uh, and and if you're doing hay then you'd have to leave it out in the sunshine for x amount of time and yeah i i i think there's a big argument to have uh, a moisture level in crops in farm sim that would that would just be really good that would make it such a difference and yeah leaving out uh, leaving out grass would allow you to to then have a uh, the moisture level change and you'd need to be able to to do it at certain points i think that would work out really well i'm gonna lift all this up and see if we can get this out of the way there we go edge of the field won't be in my way uh but yeah i think there's a, a, a quite an argument to have moisture levels in farm sim for a uh, a little bit more of uh, the realism level and then when you harvest and uh, and and what you harvest then becomes more interesting and more in depth and everything just gets enhanced that little bit more everything nicely squared off to be able to now set a gps course along this side we'll then uh go for the middle and expand out there like from that in a racetrack uh kind of setup so first point and it's going to be full before the end second point and that's all done right now i need to select the point in the middle of the field so about here-ish i think get ourselves lined up on that actually i think that's pretty spot on right take gps off because of the way our baler likes to reverse bring that up to here get back on our course drop down and away we go straight up the middle and it's going to drop a bale right here so i think we need to reverse this up and get it into uh, okay, this is the thing about that baler it just goes off to the side at a moment's notice but that'll work out of the way and we can now just get on with uh, bailing up this field and finally the rain has stopped so with any luck things will uh, dry out a little bit now and we'll be able to uh, to get the weeding going again it'll be a little while before the weeder gets going again because uh, the ground needs to dry out um but we should be able to get back onto the job a bale actually is in a really awkward position i'm probably gonna have to go and get my uh, front loader and just move it out of the way but what i might do is go and get the uh the bale collector on the uh the front loader and we can start collecting these up from here just gonna roll this out of the way yeah these are not the largest uh around bales these are the these are the smaller ones oh no back it up back it up back it up far enough i think so i hope so do i have any trailing no we've uh we've managed to back up far enough oh thank god for that um yeah the uh the bales uh these are not large bales I mean, you can see they are smaller than uh, the front wheel of my tractor so they're not particularly big ones we can roll them out the way without too much issue uh the uh if it was the really big ones uh the ones that sort of the same height as me that would be uh that would be a different story um they're heavy but they're rollable so uh that's fine we could roll that out of the way and not worry about it uh, and it'll work fine i have however missed an entire row 
there. How did I do that? We'll have to come back and clean that up in a minute. Final row of grass on this field. And then that will be everything got. There we are. And we've got, oh yeah, we've got a couple of rows of errors, which are a little bit weird. So uh, we will pick this row up here. I think the, uh, oh no, it's, it is just this row that is the error. I can see here as well that it's a little bit, uh, it's a little bit annoying how that happened. I think I just basically lifted the uh, baler up when I was doing the row and didn't put it down. But now look at how dark it's got at 20 past five. So we'll turn everything off. We'll switch over to the mower and lower it down. We'll take all this and disconnect it. And yeah, we don't want to go bail hunting in the dark. So we're not going to pick these up today. I think it's going to be a case that we uh, we go round and we collect up everything we can. We need to actually collect all this up and then mulch these fields. We learned last time that mulching the fields after we've cut them a gets rid of any excess grass we've left which uh, is always a good idea uh, and is uh, again much more realistic approach um but b uh, means that we uh, we get a nice little bit of a bonus come the next time we go to cut let's back this up see if we can get that little bit there Every bit of grass I can get at this point is going to make a difference. So we'll try and grab as much as we can. We've got the corners as well. And this is, yeah, this time of year it gets so dark so quickly. And going around trying to do these cleanups uh, just becomes harder and harder. Anything up in this corner? Not that we can easily accessed by the looks of things uh, there is a whole load down in the bottom corner though down here where we swung round and had to yeah look at that two rows there once we get this that will pretty much be this field done round again and we're up to we pick that yeah we've picked that uh 67 so turn that off and i think we should be able to unload this yeah unload unfinished bale so that will be a small bale what have you got so you got uh six thousand how much have you got in this uh two thousand three hundred and thirty six versus three thousand five hundred so yeah right and then in the middle of this field we have our mower we'll hook this back up right and then we'll take all this back uh looks like we'll have to deep do the weeding next time uh so what we'll do is we'll get the weeding done uh we'll get this field mulched we'll get all these bales collected up and we'll get them turned into silage next time so uh, a, another busy day. Second day in November is going to be busy as well. Uh, for now, though, I'm going to leave this here. So all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below. Follow on Twitch to watch live. And for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.